You know that image of Matthew McConaughey and True Detective smoking? Yeah, that's kind of my face right now. Not the smoking part, but the tension and the anxiety behind it, because I had that exact same reaction when I saw these few articles that we are going to be responding to in this video. Today we are talking about the Detroit Red Wings, because when it comes to the way they've been progressing from year to year to year to this year, especially when they're in a position where some of their games, these are the most important games they'll be playing in years. Today's game against Washington could make or break their postseason chances. It's a big two points on the line, not just for the Wings, but in depravity for the opposite team. You could say this is a four-point game. Unfortunately for me, I'll say it right here, I'm not going to be able to watch tonight's festivities between the Wings and the Capitals. I do have myself a special movie premiere that I'm attending to in the city here in Vancouver, so I will not be watching any hockey tonight. But when it comes to the Wings, you could say that with the way they performed during the seven-game losing streak, with the way this team exposed themselves when they didn't have Dylan Larkin in the lineup, you could say that there could be some concern as to the makeup of the team. And if you follow this makeup of the team all the way up the flowchart, you have yourselves the guy who acquired these players, who traded for a lot of these guys, and who makes the big decisions. Let's talk about Steve Iserman. Because there was an article published the other day on Fansighted Detroit, so OctopusThrower.com, by Tyler Cotilla talking about how Detroit Red Wings fans calling for Steve Iserman's head are overreacting. The Detroit Red Wings are teetering in the playoff race, but sitting here and calling them for the firing of Steve Eiserman and Derek Lalonde is outlandish. Now, I just wanted to let that sit in for a little bit. Now, Fansided, of course, is one of the more, let's just say, popular sports journalism websites, and Octopus Thrower is the Red Wings version of Fansided. So to see this article pop up on my timeline, I was kind of like, okay, wait a minute, what are we talking about? This piece by Cotilla goes out there and mentions how the Wings are hoping that they can make the playoffs and Dylan Larkin is back, etc., etc. However, some of the lows of this year have been quite tough. It's left the Red Wings faithful starting to turn on the organization. There have been rumblings of fans wanting to see Derek Lalonde get fired. Some folks seem to feel this is a solution, but in reality, it does not seem like the best option. Now, before we dive into the next paragraph, I will say... In the Detroit Red Wings are playing like garbage thanks priority video that we made the other day, a lot of y'all in the comments went out there and said, yeah, no, the reason this team is bad is because of Derek Lalonde. That's the guy. Like, he is the source for not getting out the best of these players, and we know they can be better. It's just, hey, he's lost the room, he's lost their mojo, etc., etc. This article goes out there and disagrees with that notion that Lalonde is quote-unquote part of the problem. However, the bigger and more rash opinion amongst fans that has come about is the idea that some Wings fans want Steve Eiserman to be fired. What a blasphemous thing to say. Eiserman has built this team, and while it has taken time, they have brighter times ahead, finally. Now, you see the text is highlighted in red. Why is that? Well, if you click on the red text, it goes over to another article published on Heavy.com, talking about how there are calls to fire Steve Eiserman, and they are growing louder. This article was published back on the 22nd. It's got 3,000 views, and, I mean, it's just an article talking about how Stevie Y was hired to return to the Wings to their rightful glory. Instead, six years into his tenure, the Wings are flailing, fighting amongst themselves, and watching their hopes for a wildcard race slip away once more. Predictably, many fans and some of the media are calling for Eiserman to be fired. Now, there isn't really any, like, proof of this. I mean, I don't think there needs to be proof, quote-unquote. There's, like, a tweet that's talked about, oh, yeah, bye-bye, Lalonde. But the thing is, when it comes to the Steve Eiserman, let's just say, hate going on, I have seen a lot of people talking about the hate, but I haven't seen too many people hating, per se. Like, I'm seeing these conversations on the Red Wings subreddit, like, oh, do we really want Steve Eiserman to be fired, or do we really believe in the Eiser plan? And the majority of people are saying, yeah, no, we're still good with Stevie Y. That's fine. 
There seems to be sort of this outrage, this outcry against the Iserman haters that has percolated online, but I don't know, maybe I'm just the only guy not seeing it. I'm not seeing many Iserman haters. I'm seeing more people talking about Iserman haters than the Iserman haters themselves. I feel like a lot of Red Wings fans, especially the ones who have been paying attention ever since Iserman took over the team, can rationally understand where the Wings are in their development and what would happen if they weren't to make the playoffs this year. If the Wings don't make the playoffs this year, it means they wouldn't be able to close out the end of this season. Which is unfortunate, right? But at the end of the day, this Wings team was not supposed to be a Stanley Cup winning team now. They were supposed to roughly contend for the playoffs now. It's why Stevie Y took the bait. It's why he signed these guys. These middling, middle-aged, middle six, middle four guys. Because if there was a time to introduce Cider, Raymond, and Larkin to the postseason, now is that time. Give them experience into what it's like playing on the most difficult hockey tournament in the world. And with the support of extra pieces like Cop, Comfer, Goss Despair, Kane, etc., they'd help them out in that respect. So if the Wings don't make the playoffs this year, it's not like the sky's fallen down. It just means they took a little bit of a step back compared to where Stevie Y projected the team to be at this point, which is not the worst thing in the world. The fact is, they are literally competing for a playoff spot. If they win this game against Washington later today, then it wildly affects their playoff odds. Take a look at this game. I'm on moneypuck.com right now. If the Wings beat the Caps in regulation today, their chances of making the playoffs goes up by 13%. If they lose to the Caps in regulation, their odds of making the playoffs drop 14%. And for the Caps, their playoff odds if they beat the Wings in regulation go up to 72%. If they lose to the Wings in regulation, they go down to 44%. So there's a lot on the line here. The Wings are literally competing for a playoff spot. So this entire idea that's like, oh yeah, Iserman hasn't built this team that's been progressing forward. It's been six years, whatever, whatever. Like, I think most Wings fans can understand, yeah, no, the plan was not to win the Stanley Cup in 23-24. This was the introductory period to being competitive once again, and the fact that they're already in a playoff race means that they are competitive. Now, let's go back over to the fan-sided Octopus Thrower article. I mean, the piece talks about how Iserman has been able to come back to Detroit and how he's made trades and everything. Matter of opinion or not saying that the Red Wings should move on from Iserman as well as Lalonde is just silly. Okay, a lot of people in my comment section said that Lalonde should be fired. The fire Lalonde crowd has been strong in December and seemingly resurfaced during the team's latest skid, but now attacking Iserman too is just downright silly. The Red Wings have the right people in the right spots. Iserman is the guy the Red Wings needed, and Lalonde has been solid behind the bench. Detroit is doing the right things and will get things straightened out. Now, that's a very optimistic perspective here from Tyler Cotilla, the writer, so thank you for that. But I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this entire Fire Iserman thing and whether or not you've actually been seeing that. Because I've seen people talking about it a lot, actually. But it wasn't until now where I saw an actual article written about it where I was like, okay, like, let's finally make a video about this because this has been a thing that has popped up, especially once Derek Lalonde's name started getting thrown around in the mud during that seven-game losing streak. That's when I slowly started noticing people saying, hey guys, stop hating on Iserman. Stop saying that Iserman should be fired. Oh, Lalonde is fine, but not Iserman. Like... I didn't even see people talking about Iserman. Maybe you did. You can let me know in the comments if that's the case for sure, but for me personally, maybe I'm just not exposed to a lot of this information, so I'm willing to keep an open mind here when it comes to talking about this, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about some Wings fans apparently wanting Steve Iserman fired. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.